Welcome to the Joy of Music. Today we bring you a program of hymns with my special guests, Betty Carlson and Jane Stewart Smith, authors of the book, Favorite Men Hymn Writers, which is the title of our program today. We will feature the music of favorite hymns from famous churches and cathedrals around the world. Hymns are a vital spiritual force in our world, and the Bible tells us to praise the Lord with the singing of psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. It's a pleasure to welcome you both again to the Joy of Music as we discuss your new book that you have written called Favorite Men Hymn Writers. You know, I think the first hymn we ought to talk about is one that certainly I love, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. And it seems that those who, who have experienced Christ in a new way just want to sing with a thousand tongues and in a thousand voices. Mm. Yes, that's a wonderful hymn of Charles Wesley. Wherever there is a, a real a turning to the Lord, a revival throughout history, there have been those who have written great hymns. And certainly Charles and John Wesley wrote marvelous hymns. And Charles Wesley, one year after he had accepted Christ as his Savior, wrote this wonderful hymn. It was on the anniversary of his rebirth. And of course, he's written, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. How can we celebrate Christmas without that? Or... Jesus Christ has risen today, or Easter. So he's probably the most prolific of all hymn writers, but this is one of his greatest. <laughs> oh, four thousand 4,000 tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of thy name. It seems to me that sometimes the simple can be the most profound. And the, the simple truths of the gospel or in scripture 
uh, can teach us more than sometimes the, the, the things that have so much detail and complexity in them. And this really reminds me of the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, which is kind of like Jesus Loves Me. It just is that simple truth that gets across to us that we need to hear. Oh, yes. Joseph Scriven was a, a young man who was in, in, uh, Irish, actually. You know, they're from many different countries, but he was going to be married and his fiancée drowned accidentally. And, of course, it was, he never actually recovered from that. So he finally emigrated to Canada. And his mother was ill in, in Ireland. He was, there was no way he could go back. He was very poor. And he wrote this verse for her. What a friend we have in Jesus. And then, as he was dying, he completed this hymn. And uh, someone asked him, how did you write this hymn? He didn't know you had so much talent. He said, Jesus and I wrote it together. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. My guests today on The Joy of Music are Betty Carlson and Jane Stewart Smith, authors of the book Favorite Men Hymn Writers, who make their home at the Christian community of La Brie in Switzerland. What a beautiful place to ponder the texts of these great hymns, which have brought words of hope and encouragement throughout the ages.
I'm so excited that we get to talk about two of my favorite hymns, which were written by the same man, Isaac Watts, and that is Jesus Shall Reign. I play that in most of my concerts and also when I survey the Wondrous Cross. Mm -hmm. Both just wonderful hymns. You know, Isaac Watts was probably, what I would say, the father of English hymn making. Mm -hmm. He was a young man, a very young man, and he was very upset about the way they sang these very poorly set uh, psalms, and that was the only thing they were allowed to sing. And his father says, well, Isaac, do something better. So Isaac started in to write all these great, he wrote about 600 hymns. And he was a very little, small man, but with a great mind, an extraordinary man. And if you go to Westminster Abbey, you will find a plaque of Isaac Watts writing down a hymn and with an angel whispering in his head. Survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I count but lost, and poor contempt on all my pride. Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were a present far too small. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Talk about a favorite hymn and a favorite uh, men hymn writers. You you can't leave out Amazing Grace. You have to talk about that. And certainly, uh, uh, Amazing Grace is is one of the best known hymns in the world and sung, just sung in almost every country. Exactly. And it was written by John Newton. And of course, every good hymn has a story. And that's why we write these books because we want people to be excited by these old hymns. They may be old, but they're ever present. And Amazing Grace is certainly one of the great ones. As we all know, John Newton, his mother died when he was a little child, and she prayed that he would come to know the Lord. And he went through terrible times, and he was a slave trader, and finally himself became a slave almost. But in a terrible storm, he was liberated, and during that time, he really came to know the Lord as his Savior. And he came back to England to become one of the great preachers of, of, in, in, in England, a very well-known man, and may I just add, he became a friend of William Cowper, one of England's greatest poets, and these two men together wrote the only hymn, but of all of them, of course, Amazing Grace is the most famous mm -hmm. one. And they would meet together every week and uh, discuss back and forth. And, and write hymns together. And, write, the and hymns. write hymns yeah. together. And if they hadn't done that, you see, you, you've got to really have an appointment. You, got, you have to say, now, we're going to do it now. And it was just, it was a great, because they both were very inspired men. And certainly the words to Amazing Grace are, again, that simplicity that just uh, yeah. tells it in such, a, in such a simple way. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see.
Both of you have made La Brie, the Christian community here started by Francis Schaeffer, your home for quite a while. And I imagine that the hymn singing has meant a lot to this community and uh, to you over the years. I really, I know it has because many people who come here for our, well, our Saturday night supper and that, and then we come and we all sing hymns here and they'll, they'll say when they go out, I've never sung a hymn in a home before or something Is like that. Is that right? Yeah. The, yeah, the students who come here yeah, love to, to sing the hymns. They do and you can just hear this sort of excitement in their voices. And you know, sometimes in churches today, I think they feel that the old hymns are sort of out. out Perhaps. You know, uh -huh. They're just out. But I, I feel that, that, that the old favorite hymns that you're talking about in your book really speak to people, and I, th I believe they still love them if they sing them. You, Betty, have written, but also you have illustrated scripture and life here at La Brie and so many other things, and those are in so many of your books, and I just want the camera to show some of these beautiful illustrations that she has done in her various books. So many times as I go around the world and play great organs in old and ancient cathedrals and churches, I think of this hymn, O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past, and it's been an inspiration to me because I, I, I see these great cathedrals and uh, they're quite awesome to me in the organs. Mm. And, and I think of how uh, God is a God of the past. He was God then, a God of the present, and a God of the future. And this to me is one of the strongest hymns that there is today, O oh God, our help in ages past. And the words are so strong. And of course, the, 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 the melody is so up, St. Anne melody. Yes. It's a wonderful hymn. Bach wrote his great St. Anne uh, fugue. Sure. And of course, this is also by Isaac Watts. And it is uh, a paraphrase of Psalm 90 which is a prayer of Moses. So it goes way back into the past, and it's right with us today. Our God, our help in ages past, and our God forever and ever. The words are almost like a foundation to our faith, and it's so strong and powerful. I want to thank you both for being on The Joy of Music today and also for sharing uh, so many wonderful thoughts and encouragement in your books. And I hope that you continue to write these books and certainly these two books on hymn writers, the women hymn writers and the men hymn writers, will be an encouragement to so many people and tell us the stories of these wonderful hymns. I hope that you really continue to do that. And we're going to end the program with... Uh, one of my favorite hymns because we used to sing it every Sunday in our church and in many churches across North America. And that's praise God from whom all blessings flow. We call it the doxology, of course. That's right. And it was written by Bishop Ken, Thomas Ken, who was a very devout and godly man. And uh, he stood strong for the gospel. 
against the kings and queens of, of England and other countries as well. And at one point was put in the Tower of London because he didn't want to do the things that were pushed upon him. But he was quickly freed. Mm -hmm. But I think probably this is the most famous verse of all hymns, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. It's a great doxology. And this is certainly a uh, great statement mm -hmm. of the Christian faith and, and a hymn of wonderful praise to God. Absolutely. The Trinity that we all believe in and love. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again next week on The Joy of Music. <laughs>